Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this webinar. My name is Simon. I'm from Flanders, DC. And uh, I would love to welcome you to this webinar that we are hosting together with VITO, the Flemish Independent Research Organization in the area of clean tech and sustainable development. Um, we're very excited to organize this webinar today because we have something to announce. We have a, a tool to launch today, the True Cost Calculator. It's something that we've been working on for quite a while, uh, actually more than three years. And we're very excited to share it with the world. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, I am going to give you first an idea of the project in which we uh, created this tool. Then I will pass the word to Anse uh, from Vito. She will tell you something about the methodology behind this true cost calculator. And then I'll come back for some uh, for a demo of the new tool. So everyone gets a good idea of how it works and how it looks. Okay, then I'd say uh, let's dive in. Uh, first, I want to share something about the SKIRT project, because uh, as you might know or you might not know, uh, where we have built this true cost calculator within the SKIRT project. SKIRT was a very or is a very big uh, European project uh, funded with Horizon 2020 fund. Um, it has been a project uh, with 18 different international partners from all over Europe. Uh, and the SKIRT project has been a project that in which we wanted and we want to address the biggest challenges of today's fashion industry. I'm sure you know a lot of those challenges. Uh, but of course, we're talking about clothing waste, recyclability. And um, we wanted to deal with those challenges by researching uh, technological innovation and also by raising awareness. So that's in a very uh, high level way uh, what we have been doing within the SKIRT project. The project has run for the past more than three years and it will end in a month uh, at the end of November. So that's something we've been working on a long time with these partners. As you see, Flanders DC and Vito are two of the partners, but we also had 16 other partners, uh, research organizations, uh, front runners in the industry, also five brands. So uh, very happy to have had those with us too. Uh, the results, I can't go into that too deep uh, for this webinar, but I would recommend to go and have a look on the website of Fashion United. Uh, there's a very recent article there about the results of the SKIRT project. But as you can see here, it's a combination of technical research and technical results. Um, possibilities for better sorting, for better uh, recycling options. Also, new yarns have been developed with recycled materials. So very interesting progress that has been made. Um, uh, that uh, was a very important and large part of the project. Uh, you can also see here that there were uh, the five brands that participated in the project also made small scale collections or are still in the making of some uh, new garments made from recyclable uh, products, uh, materials or made from recycled uh, materials. Uh, more on that also in the article on Fashion United. I can see that Yasmin already shared the link, which is great. So go and have a look, I'd say, because we don't have the time to go into that here. But it's very interesting to see what has been possible during those five years. Then I'd like to dive into the topic of today. So we're going to talk about the true cost. Uh, I think, uh, I hope some of you or most of you already have heard of the word true cost. It's a quite new uh, concept, but it's a very uh, interesting in the field of fashion, I think, because uh, it represents the impact of uh, what we are doing, the social impact, the environmental impact. And to illustrate this, I don't want to give a long theoretical explanation. I want to use an example. So I have a question for all of you. Um, we're going to look at two pairs of pants, uh, two jeans, uh, and we have two options on how to make these pairs of jeans. So we have a first option where you can see that the, the jeans is made of 100% cotton. It is it has been made in Spain and it has, let's say, a standard quality. The second option is it's made of 90% uh, organic cotton, 10% recycled cotton. And then it has been made in Bangladesh and it also has a standard quality. Now my question for everyone who is participating is uh, which of the two options do you think is the better design? Better in terms of 
let's say to make it easy, sustainability, which is the most sustainable option, both environmental and socially. What do you think is the best option? What Which option would you prefer uh, if you could uh, choose between these? Uh, great. Uh, you can answer via the chat. I'm not going to count uh, who is going to win, but I'm very interested to read it. Uh, I see mixed answers, but uh, I see uh, most people are choosing for option one, although now a lot are also coming in for number two. I'm going to leave you hanging a bit. I'm not going to give the answer yet. That's something for later in the webinar. Uh, but I do have a second dilemma, and uh, it's a bit different from the first dilemma because uh, we will see in the end it makes a different point. So we also have an option three and an option four here. Um, again, these are almost identical uh, pairs of pants. But uh, this time, option three is made of 50% lyocell and 50% recycled cotton. It has been made in India, and it has a basic quality, let's say. The difference with option four is, option four is made of 100% cotton. It's also made in India, but this time it has a premium quality. Uh, it should last longer. That's what we mean with that. Um, so, uh, which option of this of these two do you think is the best option uh, in terms of sustainability? I already read somebody said none of both is sustainable. I fully agree. I think loading by default isn't sustainable, but we need to make, make it as sustainable as possible, I'd say. Um, so, I can see a lot of people are uh, having a guess, which is great. Once again, I'm going to leave you hanging. I'm not going to give the answer yet. That will be for later in this webinar. But I think uh, what I can already say about these two dilemmas is that they uh, raise some questions. And it's clearly not everybody knows which option would be the best because we get very different answers in, the, in our chat. Uh, the thing is, the true cost, the, the true impact of clothing still remains unknown in very much cases because it's so hard to compare different scenarios there are different elements in play different parameters in play and this is exactly what we want to do with this true cost calculator we want to make more visible what the true cost is of a garment so that's what we want to do uh, and uh, how we can do that how this works uh, that i want to let Anse explain so she will have a minute now to a bit more, 10 minutes at least, uh, to talk about the concept of true cost thinking and about our methodology. Yes, indeed. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Ansis Mees from Vito. And also with regards to showing you the tool, we're going to leave you hanging for a little bit longer. Um, first, it's uh, time for the boring part, part, or in our opinion, the interesting part. Um, and that is what the true cost concept is about and also the approach that we took in developing a true cost model. Um, First of all, maybe why did we look into this, um, yeah, the development of a true cost model to be applied to apparel? Well, that is because that we see there, there are a lot of impact calculators that can be used for fashion. Um, but we noticed that a lot of them are really focusing on the production phase only. So they are not taking into account the use phase or the end of life phase of the garment. Very often, they also focus solely on environmental impacts, while we know that there is also a lot of social pressures uh, from the textiles industry. Um, the results that you, you often get to see are can be pretty unintuitive, especially for those people who are not really familiar with sustainability assessment and people in the industry. Um, and finally, it also often shows little insights in where the hotspots are or where the, the low hanging fruits are in terms of improvement potential. And then on the other hand, there is this, this concept of true cost economics. It is not new. We did not invent it. It is an existing economic model, which actually seeks to include the costs of negative externalities into the pricing of products. Um, so both from an environmental and social dimension, that is. So that is pretty interesting. But until now, it was mainly applied to, to food products and being applied in the agricultural sector, um, but not to other sectors. You can go to the next slide, Simon. Um, so that is why we decided within the context of the skirt project, we would be developing um, a true cost model, but then applied to apparel and we do this at the garment level so we really look at one individual product and its design um, we cover both the environmental and the social dimension 
and we take into account the entire life cycle of a product. So that is from the production stage, the use phase, and also the end of life phase. Um, we took into account, based on, on other research that we have been doing within Vito, uh, the impact of returns, for example, via different sales channels, so also via e-commerce. Um, we take into account maintenance impacts during the use phase. We look at different quality parameters to determine a technical lifespan of a product. And we also take into account the end-of-life processing or recycling of a garment, because, of course, in the context of the skirt project, which focused on textile-to-textile -textile recycling, um, this is very valid. And we also had some, some data there. Um, with the model that we have developed, we really try to answer to real user needs. Uh, and these users will be, yeah, Simon will come back to this later on. Um, to the questions that they have and the trade-offs that they need to make, as was shown in, in the choices that you need to, to make earlier on. Um, and also a tool that is relevant in the context of the different upcoming regulation, also on an EU level. Um, the interesting thing about true cost model is that it expresses these impacts, so both socially and uh, environmentally, in a very tangible and comprehensive unit, being Euro, so it's easy to understand for everyone, also if you're not an expert. Um, and it allows us to identify the hotspots and also define some recommendations for improvement and show you where the quick wins are. Um, so maybe some interesting terminology. On the right hand side, you will see that, uh, first of all, we will be determining the actual financial retail cost of a product. Um, we will add to that an environmental true cost and a social true cost coming to a total true cost for a one garment and the difference between this retail cost and the true cost that we will be calculating is a true cost cap so uh, i would say remember that we will be coming back to this later on you can go to the next slides yes um maybe for those interested good to know which impact categories we have been taking into account so on the environmental uh, level we look at different ones so not only resource use and climate change but we look at climate change resources pollution and toxicity uh, for the social dimension we focus on um, working conditions mainly um this part is still very much in development in general, so social life cycle assessment and quantification of social impacts. Um, so we decided based on um, a survey that we launched within the uh, advisory board and user board of the SCURP project and also based on some expert interviews um, to make a selection of the most pressing social indicators that are relevant in the context of the textile sector and to take those into account as a start. So for now, that is labor exploitation. It takes into account child labor, forced labor, um, denied freedom of association, workplace safety. We look at fair salaries and we look at gender discrimination. And the next slide. Um, so in general, how does the true cost model work? What we do is so for uh, all these different impact categories, we look then at the total environmental impacts and the social impacts. On the next slide, you can see that we then translate those different um, impacts into euros. So then we get environmental costs and social costs. And by adding both of them on the next slide, you see that we then come to the true cost gap. In the next slide. Thank you. Uh, in a bit more detail, our methodology. Um, so this is a bit more technical, maybe, so I won't take too much time here. Uh, but for the environmental dimension, um, we build upon the principles of life cycle assessment. So this is actually all really scientifically underpinned. And we make use of the EcoInvent database where you can find some standardized information about the sector. Um, we took two different approaches to, to um, calculate the, the impacts. On the one hand, we want to do a monetization. For this, we use a very specific methodology called recipe. But because this is, of course, also um, a European research project, we also provide an environmental impact profile in our calculation model, which is based on the PEF, so the product environmental footprint, um, and the PEF CR for apparel. And the end of life, we are calculating based on the circular footprint formula, which actually allows to assign specific impacts um, of the recycling process to the yeah, first use, but also to the second use. 
Uh, for the social social dimension, also here, uh, we rely on social lifecycle assessment methodologies and we use a PSILCA database, which is a specific database also including um, data on different impacts in specific countries and sectors. Um, we did find that these da this database was not always sufficient, not always complete and yeah, sufficiently um, recent the data that we could find there so we complemented it with data from the international labor organization imf and wage indicator um, and as mentioned we have a very strong focus on working conditions uh, which is also relevant to mention is that for the social dimension um, the data is not um, organization or product specific but we use country and industry averages at this moment um, and what we also do is that the, the social assessment is actually cost based where we work with worker hours, which is a difficult word for just saying we look at how much time um, a worker in a specific sector and country needs to invest to um, generate one dollar or one euro in our case of output. For the monetization step, we build on the methodology developed by, by the True Price Foundation um, and they define, they work with remediation costs and they define four types of remediation costs. So they look at restoration, meaning bringing, what is the cost of bringing the situation back to before the damage was done. They look at compensation costs. So compens the, the cost of compensating um, the affected environments or people for the damage that was done. Prevention costs to prevent uh, reoccurrence and then retribution costs, which includes fines, etc. Um, so that's a bit from the methodology part. If you then go to the next slide, you see a bit of an overview. Um, the, the pink box in the in the middle, this represents our true cost model. Uh, so as you can see, uh, we have been building upon data from the project, literature, different, um, different sources, different uh, databases, et cetera, to build our own model. So to, def to define the impact categories, to define the data for social life cycle assessment and environmental life cycle assessment, and also to monetize our impacts. That's all coming together in our true cost uh, model. So that's a calculation model that has been developed by FITO. And this is then uh, feeding into the true cost calculator, the tool uh, that we will be uh, presenting today. Um, and that has a really nice user interface that you can start working with. But now I like to hand back the word to, to Simon, who will dive into this in a bit more detail. Indeed. Thank you so much, Hansa. Uh, I think it is clear now. I hope it's clear now for everyone. There's a whole lot in the back end happening to make this possible. So as you can see, Vito did a lot of research. Uh, they brought together a lot of data information, databases, methodologies uh, to make this possible. Uh, our goal with uh, this project was, of course, to make it a very qualitative tool, but also low barrier enough. It needs to be feasible to make a calculation. So what we try to do is create a very good front end to this back-end model that is uh, behind it. So that's what we try to do by cre with creating, while creating uh, the true cost calculator that I will be showing in a few minutes. But to make it clear what we are talking about, uh, this is sort of a definition of what the true cost calculator is from today of, um, it is a self-assessment tool. So you can do a self-assessment with it to analyze the ecological and social impact of a garment over the full life cycle. That's something we think we make a difference uh, with exist some existing tools. Uh, if there are any, they normally don't do the full life cycle. That's what we try to take, with, take into account here. Um, some people might be wondering Maybe a lot of you are not wondering uh, because you might not know it yet, but I hope everyone knows our closed loop tool. Some people might be wondering how does this work together with the closed loop tool? Well, it's an addition to the closed loop ecosystem. So for those who don't know, closed loop is a, a website in the first place that we created with uh, Circular Flanders almost 10 years ago. Uh, we sometimes call it a mini Wikipedia uh, on circular or sustainable, more sustainable fashion. Uh, there's a whole lot of information in there. There are also some tools already included, like the pl Close the Loop Planner, a way to do a self-assessment of your company, where you are today on the on ter in terms of circularity and sustainability. 
Uh, what we have built now, the true cost calculator, is an addition to that ecosystem, and we hope it will feed into new users for closed loop, but also the other way around. I think if you are trying to develop a sustainability strategy, you can use the closed loop tool and information, but you will definitely also be able to use the true cost calculator. That's what we are convinced of. Okay, so who is this tool for? Who are we aiming for? This is important because the tool isn't for everyone. It's not for everybody. Uh, we are specifically aiming for the groups that you can see on your screen right now. So we're aiming for fashion designers and buyers. Definitely, we think this tool should help them uh, should help you uh, when making decisions during your process. Uh, we're also aiming for sustainability managers and sustainabil sustainability consultants, uh, people perhaps from outside of your fashion company but are co who are giving consultancy within the company. Uh, we believe they also will get a new get new insights and tools with this tool and then more generally decision makers in fashion people who want to make better informed decisions uh, we believe that we can do something for them you can see already very clear these groups are all professionals and that's a very important distinction to make uh, the tool is for professionals uh, we made a choice to make uh rather detailed tool or is it is possible to go into detail uh, that also means we will be asking some questions that customers consumers won't know uh, which is normal because we are going for this certain level of detail and scientific uh, relevant approach uh, that's why we chose not to make a tool for consumers. So if someone would hope for that, that is not what we're building. So that's a very important distinction to make. This is a tool for professionals. What are possible use cases for uh, this tool? I think we see quite some use cases. Here are some ideas. And we really hope you uh, will be able to look at the tool with this in mind. Um, the thing we hope that won't happen is that people take a look at our tool today. They think, oh, wow, uh, great that they built this. It's interesting, some insights, and then they never return to the tool. We really hope that the tool can, be, come, can become a day-to-day -day usable tool uh, or year-to-year, -year, depending on the use case. Uh, but we see it as a way to inform yourself. For example, when you're creating a strategy for your company, a sustainability strategy, when you want to benchmark certain scenarios, when you want to monitor the evolution of your choices, uh, improvement that you are making uh, needs to be monitored. This tool could help you with that. Uh, it's a way to make better informed choices when you're a designer or a buyer. Uh, for example, if there are guidelines, uh, those could be linked to true cost numbers, and these could help you in making new decisions day to day on which uh, materials to choose, which locations to produce, whatever. So we think that's also a big use case for the tool. Um, it's uh, also very well possible with the tool to compare scenarios. I will show that in a minute. I think that's also a very important use case. And then also you could learn uh, more about certain trade-offs that can exist. Sometimes something is more sustainable in one way, but it can be less sustainable in another way. So you can see certain trade-offs happening. This tool should help to give you better insights in how big the trade-offs are. There might be other user types. Uh, as I said, decision makers in fashion, of course, uh, they are also very, very welcome to use the tool. Even students or policymakers might uh, have some good use from this tool. Um, so feel free to use it. But as I mentioned before, we really think it's not a tool for consumers. So uh, that's not what we're aiming for. Uh, that uh, we wanted to make that clear enough. Um, might have it might have become clear already that there are different types of users for the tool uh, and i'd like to compare it with like uh, you can be a city planner or you can be an architect it is possible to fill out this tool in a more high level way so, for example if you don't have information very deep in your value chain uh, the resources the, the the materials that have been used where they are coming from i hope you know it I hope you know as much as possible, or if you don't know it yet, you go and research uh, to know as much as possible about your value chain. I think that's a responsibility for every fashion company to do a good due, to have good due diligence. Um, but if you don't, 
have all that information yet. You can still use the tool and it can be more on a high level uh, way. I would compare that to the city planner. Uh, on the other hand, it is also possible to use the tool as an architect when you are to go into very much detail. You have the information, the very specific numbers deeper in the value chain. That is also possible. And we even encourage it to use it like that because you will get more detailed insights, more correct insights. Uh, that will become more uh, clear in a minute when I show uh, what the difference is between those these two scenarios. But I wanted to reference it up front because uh, I can imagine it might be a bit scary if I'm going to show uh, the way to fill out the tool. For some people, it might be too detailed. You might see some values or screens that you're not familiar with uh, that you were asked for. Then I want to just already uh, warn you, not everything that we ask for is mandatory to fill out. So there are certain options in filling it out. You can fill it out more as a city planner, high level. You can fill it out more as an architect and you can go very deep into detail. It's up to you how far you can go with that. So that's, that's something I wanted to acknowledge up front. Okay, then we have the tool. So this is the homepage of the tool. If that might have not been clear yet, uh, the tool, when we talk about the true cost calculator, calculator sorry we're talking about a website it's a website uh, that you can visit uh, starting from today um it is i think and i hope very straightforward website so you can see here already on the home page the main goal of the tool and of the website is to start a calculation to start using it so that's our main call to action on the home page uh, there are also some other buttons of course you can read more about the tool about how it works uh, I don't want to go into that now because Ansa already told a lot of what you can find on those pages. So the main goal or the most important page uh, on our website on our website is the uh, the page where you can do a calculation. And we actually have um, a dashboard where this all comes together. So you can log in or you can make a profile and log in on the tool to to uh, start making calculations, to uh, save them and also return later to work on them. So that's uh, this page. And what I want to do now is a bit risky always in a, in a live webinar, but I'd like to uh, use the actual tool as it is. So with a live demo, uh, so I'm going to switch a screen now. I hope that works. Uh... Yes, it does. It does? Uh -huh. Yes. Really? Because I think, no, no, this is the website. Yeah, sorry. I think you can see my uh, page scrolling now. Yes. Yes, great. OK, so this is a real uh, live version of a, of a dashboard, of a profile uh, we created. Uh, you can see here it is uh, very straightforward. So you have a button to start a new calculation, of course. This is when you have logged in to the website. Then you have uh, a view on your open calculations. So these are uh, calculations where you want to calculate the true cost of a garment, but you're not finished yet. Uh, and then you have uh, some calculations that are already completed or closed. As you can see here, we have a lot of uh, test testing uh, here. So you can see we have already quite some calculations. Um, and for each of these calculations, there is um, uh, a module behind it where you can see uh, the calculation itself, or I should say better, where you can see the data that you need to fill out. So I'm going to open one of these calculations as an example um, by editing it. Then we can see how it is, has been filled out already. Uh, so we don't start from nothing. That would take a bit too long during this webinar. But uh, as you can see, you uh, when you open new calculation, you will reach this page. Uh, this is uh, a page where you can give the garment that you want to do a calculation for a name, of course. In this case, it's jeans option one. Uh, you can see some information here. And on the right hand side, uh, a unique URL. Uh, I'm going to already explain that uh, right now. Uh, this is for you to be able to share a calculation with other colleagues, for example. Sometimes it might be possible that you don't have all the information yourself from deeper within the value chain, for example, then you can share the link with a colleague and that colleague can work further on your calculation. Then we're gonna uh, scroll a bit down and you will see here eight of eight steps complete. When you start, of course, uh, zero of eight steps will be completed. Uh, these steps are a reflection of how the value chain looks in fashion. Um, we want to gather enough good information 
about your product as possible. And we have divided it into eight steps or eight surveys that you can fill out. Some of them are a bit longer, some of them are a bit shorter, but they're all feasible, I can assure you. Uh, in this case, you see they're all, all, all completed, but uh, uh, it looks the same almost when you have done nothing yet. So then they're all, all open. Uh, I'll go, I'll run through uh, most of them uh, just to give some extra information for each of the surveys. But we will do it not in too much detail because, uh, of course, time is limited. Uh, but you can see we have first a general survey where uh, you can choose uh, which product you will do a calculation for, etc. Then we have some uh, surveys about the value chain upstream, uh, the production phase. We all uh, each time go a bit deeper in the value chain. So you start with the garment manufacturing, the confection, then you go to the fabric production, the yarn production, and even the fiber production. Uh, these are steps deeper in the value chain that might not always be clear to you uh, in detail, but if you have the information, you can fill it out. Um, and then we also go downstream in the value chain. So there are also a few surveys after you sell the product. So about the distribution phase, the retail phase, about the use phase. Uh, as I said, this is something where our tool tries to make a difference and then the end of life phase. So these are the eight surveys. If I would open the first one on the general info, you can see it's very straightforward and not too long, but we need some information. Uh, obviously a name for the product, you need to choose a garment type. As you can see, we have a lot of options here ready for uh, types of garments that you can uh, do a calculation for. We will ask for color, uh, garment fit, some extra information to get a good idea about which type of product you are um, working with and a stock location, the place where the garment is kept in stock. You will see there are multiple, multiple times that we ask for a location uh, that is obviously to take transport into account too. Uh, if we then go back to the uh, survey list and we already had a look at the first general info uh, survey or step, we'll also have a look at the garment manufacturing step. Um, which, which is the first uh, more detailed um, survey that you can fill out. So here you see multiple questions. I won't go into each of them, but you see uh, uh, some technical questions about the product, about the price of the product. And you will already see here a difference between questions in white, in a white background, which are mandatory. They have a, a, a red asterisk or a red star uh, next to them. Those are mandatory. And you can also see some of the questions are in more in a gray, grayish black uh, background. Um, that means these questions are not mandatory. We have already entered default values for these questions because sometimes it might be difficult to interpret uh, or difficult to know some of the information. Uh, not always. I think the questions that you can see here are quite easy to correct if they if they have a different. Uh, uh, answer, but um, these are not mandatory because uh, we want to make it as low barrier as possible. If you don't fill out or if, if you don't adjust these uh, questions, then you will get uh, the answers as they are filled out uh, right now. And then you will uh, the, the tool will make a calculation based on how it is filled out right now. You can see here uh, it's about packaging type, for example, but also about finishing methods. Um, you can uh, add or remove uh, certain trims uh, to make the information about that we have about the full product as clear and exact as possible. Uh, and then there's also an option to indicate if there are certain certification labels already in place for this product. Um, you see we have a list of labels here. It's not a complete list because there are also very... There are a lot more labels than these that you can see here. Um, this is something that is in um, in uh, in progress, I would say. So we have uh, added a list here. Uh, we want to acknowledge that it's very important uh, to uh, have labels, or some labels are, are more relevant than others. But uh, we acknowledge there's a, there's a big value to this. So that's why we want to ask for them. But at this moment, uh, to be very clear. This will not have an impact yet on your calculation. We might add that functionality. We're trying to add that functionality in the future that it, for example, could 
have an impact if you have a certain label like the gods label has uh, says something about the environmental and social uh, impact of uh, of um, uh, of a fabric that you are using um in that case we could make a correction to the true cost because the gods label is present or it is not but that uh, does not happen today yet so we are already asking it for for the future actually and also to acknowledge the importance of labels but uh, it is not being used today in calculations if we then have a look at another uh, step, I think uh, we don't need to go uh, through everything, but I will have a look at the fabric production. I think that's also a relevant one, a very relevant one. Here you can see some other mandatory questions about how the fabric is made, how much uh, percentage uh, a fabric has in the total garment. Uh, there are also some not mandatory questions just like before. But what I wanted to show here is that there are also some questions about the quality. I think this is also good to know. Um, this is something uh, Vito, uh, Flanders DC, and also Xandras have been working on uh, last year, uh, a project where we um, try to understand the importance of quality, technical quality, uh, um, the, the, the lifespan of a product uh, better, and also link it to certain test values. Uh, you can see here uh, some of the test values or the important test values to determine if a product uh, has the possibility to have a long lifespan or not. Uh, if you have that information, if you have uh, test information on the abrasion resistance, for example, the tear strength, the seam strength, you can fill it out. It's not mandatory, but it's uh, a good way to uh, learn more about the quality of the product and the possible lifespan of it. Uh, this will also have an impact because we also will look at the cost per wear of, of each uh, product, the true cost per wear. Going to go back to the uh, overview page. Uh, so I think we already showed a few of the surveys, the general info, the garment manufacturing, the fabric production. There are, then we also have uh, surveys for the yarn production and the fiber production. I won't go into those right now. They have the same uh, method uh, or way of use as the, um, the previous uh, surveys. But I want to uh, also have a, a quick look at the distribution and retail phase, the use phase and the end of life phase. So uh, when we look at distribution and retail phase, we're going to look at the channels that you uh, will be using for sales because those also can have an impact. Uh, also, the business model, is it be, uh, being sold or is there perhaps a rental? Uh, which location of the sales? Because that also can have an impact on transportation impact, uh, the packaging that's being used. So there are a lot of questions here about the distribution and retail phase. Uh, when we look at the use phase, um, we are talking about washing programs, washing temperature, because those choices or those uh, parameters also have an impact, of course, on the total true cost. So that's what we will be asking there. And then there is the last survey on the end of life phase, uh, where we uh, don't go in very deep, uh, but we will want to get some information about the risk of recyclability of a product, uh, if there is perhaps a take back scheme in place or not, because that can also have a good impact on your true cost if it is possible. And if there is, if there are efforts being done to recycle a product, then uh, that will um, uh, benefit your uh, true cost, of course. Okay, I hope this wasn't uh, too. Um, chaotic, but uh, I just really wanted to give a, a quick look into the different surveys that you uh, can fill out uh, to make a true cost calculation. Then I want to have a look at the results, of course. So I'm going to go back to another option just to win some time. Uh, another calculation, sorry. Uh, so we had the option one before. Now I'm going to look at the result of genes option two. So this is not the same uh, genes as the one before. But here you, you get a look at the result, what you learn when you fill out a true cost calculation. So first of all, you will get um, a total true cost. Uh, this is uh, a number, uh, a cost that you can see, which is, uh, as Anse explained before, uh, the sum of the internal direct cost, the retail price, and then the true 
cost gap, uh, the additional environmental and social impact expressed as a number, as an as a amount of euro, uh, divided in a social cost and an environmental cost. Uh, this is for us a very important number, which represents the impact that you are that you are creating with this product. But you can go into much more detail. And this is what you can see here below. Uh, you can uh, see some tabs where you can go into more detail about the results of your uh, calculation. So first of all, you can get a breakdown per phase. We, we went over the surveys that represented the different steps in the life cycle. Uh, you can see here for each of those uh, steps uh, how big, how large the step is, which part this step uh, takes in the full true cost of your garment. So you can see here the garment manufacturing step represents 24% uh, of the true cost. And we have the fabric production, the yarn production, the fiber production, all different parts of the total true cost. Um, and uh, it goes up until the end of life phase. As you can see here, there is also a negative cost, minus 15 cent. This is because in this case, there is a recycling uh, take back scheme in place, which we take into account as a correction um, to the total true cost. Um, this is a first step. Of course, you can click on each of these steps for a little more information and you will uh, be able to read up on how garment manufacturing can add to your true cost or what you can do to improve the true cost in uh, the garment manufacturing phase. Then you can go to a next tab in this results page where you have the supply chain tree. This is a, a, an overview where you can uh, once again see the, the different uh, steps in the supply chain, so upstream, and you can go over each step and then analyze how much the different parts of the uh, of this step contribute to your uh, true cost. For example, if you look at the fabric production, we can see here there's a certain cost for the jeans, um, uh, the fabric, organic and recycled cotton energy use. There is uh, a cost for the transport. So you can dive much deeper here into each of the different components of your um, of your true cost for each of the different phases. Then there's a third tab and a fourth tab. They are quite similar. The third one is about the social impact. So you can dive deeper into the different uh, categories that we took into account to determine the social impact uh, on a labor exploitation level, on the workplace safety level, fair salary and discrimination. As you can see here, you can uh, then read up about what is meant with each of these topics and you can see how much each of the phases contributes to the impact within this topic. So uh, as you can see here, the fiber sourcing in this case is the biggest risk uh, 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 in terms of minimum wage. We have a, a similar page for the environmental impact, where once again, we have uh, different topics, climate change, resources, pollution, and toxicity, where you can again uh, see how the different phases or steps in the process contribute to the true cost for each of those topics. Climate change, as you can see here, uh, resource use, non-renewable energy, et cetera, et cetera. So I would really invite you to have a look at each of those uh, steps uh, because I think they can learn you a lot. Uh, what I wanted to do now, because I can see I'm already uh, very far in time, uh, is do demonstrate one last thing. I think it's a very important functionality. We are very aware that making a true cost and the, the results that you just saw uh, can be interesting. It can give you an idea of the, uh, the division of the impact over your full life chain or value chain of, of your product, but still it remains a bit abstract. Right? You can see here numbers like uh, seven euro true cost gap, uh, 11 euro through cost gap. Those numbers don't say a lot yet because we don't have a frame of reference. And that's really important, of course, to interpret it. But that's why we also wanted to add a compare functionality. So this makes it possible to compare multiple products and see how the true cost or the impact is different between different scenarios. And this is when it becomes interesting if you want to make choices for certain scenarios in your, in your process. 
uh, the tool can help you to validate it, which option is the most beneficial or not. So let's give it a try. For example, if we would like to compare option two here or option, I will take option three, uh, and we would like to compare it to another option, you get this screen where you see on the left hand side uh, the, the, the breakdown of the true cost of option three. And then you can see here an option to select another uh, garment, in this case, option four, and it will open next to each other. And you can see the differences in the true cost for each phase. Uh, and you can also see here which is the most beneficial uh, product. Uh, so in this case, option four has a lower true cost per wear, which is better, uh, which should be better. So that's why this is the most preferred option. Um, it is also uh, possible uh, if you want to uh, do this in an easy way, you can, sorry for scrolling so quick through a website, but um, when you have filled out one true cost calculation, it is of course possible to duplicate it and then make a quick adjustment to make uh, comparisons between two scenarios that are almost ident identical, but just have one or two differences that should make it easy to use this compare functionality. I'm going to have a look back to my presentation now. So uh, I think this was the demo, uh, if I haven't forgotten anything. So uh, one minute, please. I'm returning to my slides. Um, yes, I think we are here. So we saw the compare functionality. Um, I think I said everything about the tool that I wanted to say. What I want could add now to end is that we are aware that the tool is still uh, up for improvement. Uh, we still see some possible uh, improvements for the future that we would love to work on. Uh, for example, we could extend the social impact indicators to get more detail in there. Uh, we could implement other circular strategies. We're not now, we now have an option to indicate if you are working with a rental business model, but there could go more into in detail uh, for that part. Um, there are some other data gaps that we see, and we also see a lot of development potential in the tool itself. But um, we don't want to wait. We want to launch the tool, of course, uh, now as it is. Uh, we know that it already has uh, a lot of value. Uh, so that's why we want to open it up to you today. And uh, we are very, very curious to hear your reactions. Um, I want to end with uh, coming back to the dilemma at the of the beginning of the webinar. So we had two options there. Uh, I'm not sure which was the most chosen option, option one or option two, but I can give you a look into the answer. As you can see here, uh, the true cost of option one was five euros and 22 cents. Option two had a true cost of, true cost gap, excuse me, of seven euro 53. So that means the first option was the, the, the most uh, beneficial option in this case. Um, I think, uh, the, sec the, the following dilemma is, is another uh, option where it is very interesting to have another look at it because here you can see again a difference in true cost gap where option four has the biggest true cost gap. So you could uh, reason that option three is the better option. But what is important to, uh, to point towards in this comparison is that the true cost per wear gives a different view because as you saw here, the quality of the option three was basic. Uh, option four had a premium quality. That means that we think, uh, based on the parameters, that the option four could have a much longer life lifespan. It could be worn more times, which uh, which causes it to have a lower true cost per wear, and that's. Uh, the more important metric we think. So in this case, it would be option four that is the most uh, preferred option. All right, I hope it was clear. Always difficult to give these types of demo webinars, but I hope uh, I could give you some insight. Um, here you can see the URL of the tool itself. So obviously we invite everyone to go and have a look after the webinar. It's truecostcalculator.eu. Uh, but now, first, we'd like to take some time for questions. Uh, if there are any remarks or questions, 
we can dive into those right now. Uh, I will first uh, look at the question that is in the Q&A tab from Kasper. Yes, I think this is mainly a question on how to take into account um, garments or fibers that have been recycled or garments that have been upcycled. Um, I think there the clue is that we are really focusing on on recycling in the sense that you can select um, recycled fibers as input material, upcycling explicitly in, in the sense of uh, remanufacturing is not taken into account in this tool. So we start from uh, technical lifetimes based on quality parameters and we mainly look at recycled content as an input material and um, recycling at end of life phase. I hope this answers your question. There has been some questions about how we take into account, for example, specific um, social aspects. So maybe it's good to mention there that we um, the aspects that you are taking into account here are still rather limited. So, for example, for workplace safety, we look at accidents happening on the work floor, both um, fatal and non-fatal. We here built upon averages in different sectors. So, for example, and, and countries. So, we look at the manufacturing location. But for sectors, we, for example, for the um, production of cotton fibers, we look at the agricultural sector. For a lot of other manufacturing steps, we look at the textile manufacturing sector. And we try to always take a worst case approach, meaning assuming that workers are not sufficiently insured, etc. Um, and that a high contribution in terms of remediation is required. Um, but we do like to would like to extend this more in the future. Um, there is also indeed a question about how to interpret the results of the calculator. I'm not really sure um, how to interpret this. Um, we try to provide different dimensions based on which you can interpret the results. So different comparability broken down into different um, dimensions. So relatively, the relative breakdown of, of the true cost gap, um, looking at the different impact categories and to which extent they contribute. Um, but if you feel like this is insufficient or you would like to see other types of breakdowns, um, I would really welcome you to, to provide some feedback via the form and we can always look into this. Um, uh, what I would add is what you already said is very important for me too. It's a decision support. So uh, the result itself, the number that you get out of the tool, it has a value, of course. It's interesting and you can uh, learn from it also to see how big a number is. But the most the, the, the best way to learn from this tool, I think, is by comparing scenarios and by looking at the uh, differences between certain scenarios. And then you can really use it as a decision support. So I think that is a very important aspect of interpreting the results. Great. I see there are uh, some questions that already have been asked, answered. Uh, via the chat. So for example, yeah. someone asked, will the model be continuously updated with new available data to guarantee the latest know-how? I think the answer is yes. Uh, Tom already answered that. Uh, the tool will be a continuous work in progress. So the data yeah. will be updated. Uh, Absolutely. I think there it's also good to mention we are to a large extent now relying on background data. Um, but I think data availability is one of our main concerns in the con also in the continued development and improvement of this tool. So we're definitely also looking for more first-hand data also from industry, for example, on finishing processes and dyeing processes, very little quantitative data is available. Um, so we are very open for any collaborations there to extend our model. Um, but anyways, we will keep on as also our databases are being updated, et cetera, and more information becomes available. We will keep on feeding this into the, the, the calculation model on the back end. Then a um, question about uh, why it is limited to fashion. We, of course, this was part of the skirt project. So the focus was on fashion the whole time. Uh, I think we start with fashion for Flanders DC. Fashion is our focus industry also. But for Vito, uh, as already mentioned in the chat, it could be used in other uh, product categories or industries, but that's to be uh, discussed or to be seen how, uh, how that could evolve. But at the moment, we definitely made a choice for fashion. Mm -hmm. Again, I think also again, their workwear 
different processes taking place, other finishings, other th chemicals being used, data that we at this point don't have available, but we would be very happy to be able to extend our model in that direction if anyone would be willing to provide us with that data. Yeah, I saw another question on whether it's possible to share the true cost with customers. Um, at this point, uh, we would definitely discourage that because as mentioned, um, it's still work in progress a lot. There is some valuable information there, but at this point, we really consider it to be decision support. So in your design decisions, um, we are not really there yet with with the entire calculation model. It's not complete yet. And also in the context of yeah, avoiding greenwashing <laughs> um, or making claims that are not sufficiently underpinned, we would, we would discourage this at this moment. Okay. Um, and then maybe I also saw a question with regards to the wares. Uh, this is something that comes up regularly. So we made a decision here to base ourselves on, on technical lifespans because we do not have information on how long in practice garments are being used, um, both in the context of this project, but also in the context of other research uh, projects we have been diving into this and it's very hard to to make a claim on this so that's why we opted for um, technical lifespans also because we focus on the design stage here and supporting uh, designers and buyers where we can take into account quality parameters and how they impact lifespans so that's the decision that we made here to focus on these more um, technical lifespans yeah and not actual ones um, then I see a question. Would it be possible to include more detailed social audit data to avoid that countries like Bangladesh are always the worst choice? Um, could you go into that answer? Yeah, at this point, that is not possible. So unless there are specific certifications in place, we have that built into the tool that we can make use of that in the future. Um, so for this version of the tool, it's not possible, um, but I think it's important to make a distinction between this tool and the calculation model at the back end. There we have way more open parameters, let's say, or a lot more freedom um, to play with the numbers. So if that would be interesting, yeah, happy to discuss what future developments can be made there or how we can have other outlets of this model in another way where that can be uh, included. Um, it's definitely something that we have on our radar um, because that's one of the downsides of using these industry country averages. We are very well aware that, of course, not every manufacturing location in Bangladesh is performing um, badly. Um, but that's a bit the, the approach that you're taking now. But we do want to make some improvements there to see how we can make it more specific if desired. Right. Then... Um... Another question I think that hasn't been dealt with, does the data that gets added by us users feed the model as well? That is not the case at the moment. So we're not using your data to improve the, the model. Uh, it, it sparked uh, at a certain moment our mind in our mind to try and do that, but we made the choice not to do it because mm -hmm. we really base uh, the, the model. Well, Vito can better explain it, but the model is really based on scientific data and not on user data. Mm -hmm. And then, I agree with Jules' remark, indeed. It's um, yeah. just mentioned, and that's something to keep in mind. Yeah, for the people in the recording, so the remark is, of course, and we fully agree, there are suppliers in Bangladesh that are not exploiting workers. Um, so that's what uh, Hans already talked about. Okay. I think we dealt with the most important questions. Uh, very happy that we were here with a bunch of people. I hope it was clear enough. Uh, then I suggest we round it up. Uh, as you can see on the screen here still, uh, the link is truecostcalculator.eu. There's also a contact form where you can always keep asking your questions or send us your feedback about the tool. As we said a few times, it's a work in progress. We still are going to keep on improving the tool. So let us know if you have any ideas or questions, then we can take that into account. 
Thank you very much, Ansa. Thank you very much, everyone, for participating. We'd love to see you next time and uh, have a nice day, I'd say. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye.